All right, welcome back to another episode of the Carter Cast. I'm your host, Carter Bond. With me, as always, Connor Dillon. We're back. Uh, we recorded Monday. You know, we're back. We're back, guys. We're recording right now. It's Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. The Hornets are playing right now. So Connor's probably going to have a little side eye action going on in the Hornets game while we're recording right now. Uh, shorter episode. So should we just get right into it? Let's get into um, it. Side note, uh, you might have me my full attention for the first, you know, 30 minutes. They got a little bit till tip off. They're, they're in, oh, the windy, yeah, in the windy city tonight. So I'm not, focused. I'm locked in. Not me, though. Iowa, Iowa State women's basketball just tipped off. Mm, so worthy of a bonk worthy of a bonk for Caitlin no Clark? no 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 worthy purely of a bi- bonk purely business purely business mm-hmm. we need uh we need iowa to win by in between eight or twelve dylan dylan's watching wisconsin volleyball highlights that's what they were oh, don't to. even <laughs> don't even oh we're off to oh, a great shoot. start we're off <sighs> A quick rundown. We're going to talk about some NFL games individually. Then we're going to do a parlay as always. And then uh, we have a little something fun at the end that we have planned. So uh, let's uh, let's start. Should we do Colts Bengals? Colts, Colts Bengals. It's a Get sneaky. It. That's a sneaky fun game. Let's see here. We have the spread at Colts minus one in Cincinnati. It's supposed to be bad weather. Apparently the totals moved quite a bit. Jake Browning had his legacy game on Monday night against the Jags played out of his mind. The Colts, they just keep winning games. This is like this belong this game belongs on the the ESPN noon game. You know, the ASC ESPN noon playoff <laughs> game on Saturdays. That's what this belongs in because it this feels so right for that game. I mean, this is a perfect Andy Dalton versus Carson Wentz graphic or something <laughs> like that. I mean, that's just exactly what it feels like. Well, that's what we're getting. We're getting Gardner Minshew versus Jake Browning. So yeah, you know, different variation. Same song, different verse. Dylan, do you have anything on this game? I have nothing on it, but I pulled up the weather as you were talking about. So Saturday in Cincinnati, it's supposed to be 61 degrees and rainy. Uh, Sunday in Cincinnati, 40 degrees and a mix of rain and snow. The Here, I understand on this show, we get into the meat of the games, what are the picks or whatnot. I am sick and tired of being promised snow games and then not getting the snow. Green I'm Bay was an all-time example. Oh, green. There are two Chiefs games this year. I remember when they played Denver. All we heard about was six inches of snow coming in. They, you know, a lot, of, a lot that, of snow. That's so wow. much. That's way too. Six inches is a crazy and then, amount. And then we get to the game. There's no snow. And same thing against Green Bay and Lambeau. Have, no, well, you're saying there's no snow. There was probably like an inch or two, and that's still a lot of snow. It's still a decent amount of snow. Uh, still a decent amount of snow, but you know none that say, I saw. Did- I didn't get to see any of the snow. No, they didn't. And that's the other thing is like, oh, you know, Taylor Swift, they're like, oh, she's going to Green Bay in the snow. There wasn't snow. Did there Travis Kelsey snow. turn weather off? Well, we did say the Eagles have weather control. They have weather on. Yes, the, we, the Chiefs might have weather off. But all that being said, we go to Lambeau. All we hear is, oh, it's going to be a snow game. No snow. Do we finally get snow? I don't know. I was impressed with what Jake Browning did on Thursday Night Football. I'll be honest, I fell asleep at halftime. I didn't think I <laughs> didn't think that it was going to be a good game. And here we go. It's one of the best Thursday night games we got. But as far as the game goes, I have nothing. It's backup against backup. I'll be rooting for the Colts to lose as a Titans fan. Uh but Jake Browning kind of I mean, is Joe Burrow system quarterback? People are asking. <laughs> That's a I mean, not the not the Burroughs system quarterback part, but Browning looked poised. That's the thing. He wasn't it wasn't just dump offs and screen passes. He was, you know. Once after the first quarter where Jamar Chase had like, what, 20 yards on six catches or something ridiculous like that, he started airing it out a little bit. You know, there was some routes down the field. I don't think I'm ever going to be confident in either one of these guys, but man, Colts have won four straight. Minshew's looked like a confident quarterback, but the teams they've beat, it's nothing to write home about. So if, if you put a gun to my head, I think I'm picking the Bengals here. I, I don't know. I think I might take the Colts. Really? You try... I Minshew Colts, has been – he's been slinging it. Like, and I also, Colts def- this Colts defense I, just let up 28 to Tennessee and will let Yeah, but if, so. the, if the weather's bad, they're going to have to rely more on the pass game or the run game by, on each side, and I trust the Colts' offensive line going against, uh, mm-hmm. what, subpar Bengals rush D? Dylan, stats department, what's the Bengals' rush defense like? Give me 20 seconds. All right, stats department, nice. That's why, that's why we have you hired here. That's why we have you hired here. But I lean Colts – but I'm, I want to wait until kickoff. I want to see what the weather's like. If it's a fake snow game, I'm going over. I'm going over in this game. I'm actually going to take it because 
I think there's the defenses just aren't good enough. And these quarterbacks weirdly sling it. Like they, they'll throw the ball. They're not afraid. Yeah, I think that's fair. Who, who did we want? Bengals or Colts? Bengals run D. Bengals run D, 10th worst, uh, PFF grade, 58.9. What about Colts? But Colts, second worst, 51.3. Ooh, so then, Connor, you're on to something there. You're on to yeah. something there. Home field, well, I too? Mean, I mean, don't 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 get me wrong. Jonathan Taylor, a great running back. Zach Moss, a great number two. But the Bengals, I mean, Joe Mixon was cooking on but, Monday night against Jacksonville. Well, and their backup, Taylor's out. their backup, Brown, was also pretty good. Yeah, and Taylor's out. Is it official? He is. Oh, I was going to ask. I'm pretty sure he's out. I thought he was doubtful, but I could be wrong. Maybe I got a bad report. Maybe we're going to get stats department on it again. But while we while we do that, so I think we kind of made our picks in that game. Let's move on. Let's talk about another game. Rams Ravens. This week in the NFL right now, we have a lot of games that are like, oh, this is sneaky, like a big deal. There's a lot of implications in these games where you wouldn't think so. Even like a Vikings Raiders game that has a lot of implications on it. Rams Ravens. That's why we're talking about it. Jags Browns with a backup quarterback or fifth string maybe by the Browns like that's a big game too there's so many of these that have so many implications but I want to do Rams Ravens right now Ravens minus seven I don't know what the total is I don't really care what the total is it seems like the Rams win or the Ravens win this one at home yeah um I think if you can get it at seven I'd probably take Baltimore here because you look at what they've done, you know, they beat Chargers only by 10 points, beat Cincinnati by two scores, and then that loss to the Browns. I've been on the Ravens all year, and I think this is going to be the launch point where it's like, oh, man, we need to start taking these guys seriously as Super Bowl contenders because the Chiefs look a little shaky after that Jordan Love Packers masterclass. The Bills, they've been shaky all year. The Dolphins, not a lot of people believe in them. These Ravens have to be taken seriously for the AFC. It's wide open right now. Burrow's out, so the Bengals are done. I think this is a launch pad for the Ravens. I think Lamar's going to dice up this Rams defense, and I think they win pretty handily. I don't think seven's enough, especially in Baltimore. That defense it, is, is vicious. And the Rams aren't a bad team, and you see the line. I think when I saw the line, I thought it was going to be a Vegas zone game, like five and a half, four and a yeah. half around there. And then, you see, and then you see the seven, and you're like, whoa, seven points? But, but it's it justified. Makes, I think it's justified, too. Seven and a half, you know, you're like, I don't like getting hooked there. If you get seven, I like the Ravens there. I think they win this game, and I, I I agree with you, Connor. I think the Ravens beat the Rams by double digits. I know I can't say those words after the Georgia game, but I think they beat the Rams by double digits. Dylan, anything on this one, or did you get stats department? I got stats department on it. Jonathan Taylor, not a participant in practice, but his designation is unspecified. So okay, we'll see we as the week goes. But uh, as far as this game goes, I do like the Ravens, and I talked a little bit either – on this show or the live stream, the, the Rams are trending upwards. And normally when teams trend a certain way, after a couple of games, I like to buck that. And Matt Stafford, really turning back the clock, I think he has seven total touchdowns the last two games. Um, it's a lot. But let's add some context. Let's look at the last two teams they've played. Two weeks ago, they played the Cardinals. The last week, they played the Browns, who have a good defense. But the Ravens, according to PFF, are better in coverage, better overall defense. So this is really going to be a test for the Rams, are can they keep the momentum going? I am going to duck that a little bit. Uh, I took the Ravens, I believe, coming off a bye. I didn't play last week. So they're going to be well-rested. Right. Uh, I love the Ravens here. I and mean, this is supposed to be a rain game, and I, I trust the Ravens to get it done on the ground more so than the Rams. I, I need to look this up too. I didn't. I wasn't able to do enough prep on this game, but I want to see how the Rams do against mobile quarterbacks. Obviously, they took care of business against the Cardinals with Kyler Murray, but I am curious to see about these other games that they've played or maybe if they've had to play other mobile quarterbacks or not. Connor, anything else on this one? Uh, no, I, I think the Ravens, like I said, Lamar Jackson MVP stock is going to go up. We called Dak last week. I think there's going to be a big numbers game for Lamar. I don't know how many times he's going to have to rush the ball, but I think they're win handily, so that's only going to add to the narrative. And last thing, AFC is wide open, so... Uh, so let me ask a couple questions. I, if, if we have time, we can divulge on, on the, uh, rushing quarterback, mobile quarterback dynamic real quick. Do you consider Dak a mobile quarterback? That's what I was going to ask. Cause I was looking at the schedule too. That, that could be a I segment think, on its own. Who's a mobile a quarterback? I think there's a difference because mobile and like running quarterback is two different things. Cause Lamar Jackson, he can be a running quarterback. He can carry the ball 15 times a game and nobody's going to like think twice about it. Dak can be mobile. He can move around the pocket. He can get outside on those bootlegs and play actions. Are you, are you saying Lamar Jackson can't throw the ball? Of wow. course not. I have, I have good money on him to win MVP. But <laughs> I think Dak's mobile, but he's not a running quarterback. He's not going to take off for 20 yards at any given moment. Like, if he does, you're like, wow, what a run. You're surprised. So, I don't for know if sample, I am surprised. 
the first sample I see, they haven't played a lot of mobile quarterbacks. They did play the Eagles. They lost 23-14. Jalen Hurts threw for 303 yards with a touchdown and an interception. 15 carries, 72 yards, and a touchdown. That is the first game. That was like week six, and that was the first game they faced like a truly mobile quarterback. And then since then, I, I mean, I don't consider Jordan Love one yet. Geno, no. No, right? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, that's really the only one they played other than Kyler last week because when they played the Cardinals the first time, I don't think it was I don't think it was Kyler yet. You don't so, wait, you don't consider what, Joe Flacco mobile? Wasn't it Clayton Toon? He's he's elite. He is elite. Mm. He's elite, but he's not mobile. Different five letter <laughs> word. Ah, nope, mobile six. <laughs> Do you have anything on this one, Dylan? Uh Ravens. Yeah, there you go. Are Ravens, you, minus are you seven. Actually backing the Ravens or yeah. just Okay, I already have it. I would not take it at seven and a half. I think I, I think I have the game at eight and a half. So this is a perfect teaser. I don't know who's no. the teasers, but tease the Ravens Dylan, down. Why don't the you total, like teasers? The total or the the uh, no the side. spread? No, no, no the spread. No, Carter loves teasing those totals. No, I don't like teasing the totals, but there are too many totals to tease you're, last you're week. To, that you're, to, you're, to, you're a totals <laughs> teaser, Carter. Totals teaser over here. I, I mean, hey, when you give me twenty and a half. The Falcons Jets. I think I have to take it. I took, I, I took a six hit. point. I took a six point teaser when the line opened. Uh, Steelers minus point five, Ravens minus one and a half. So that's my teaser of the week. So we'll see tomorrow if that gets ruined by the Patriots. But. That's oh, you're backing Mitch Trubisky. I sure am. He's a Tar Heel. He's gonna win that game tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. That Don't mean great. anything. That mean anything. Dog. Dog factor. No. no. Ah, ah, he likes to kiss titties. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we, maybe we had a little mishap on the dog rankings. Maybe I forgot. <laughs> the computer needs to account for these things. Yeah, yeah I think the, compu- I, the, the computer's got a virus. You can, <laughs> you can, you could have a dog ranking of backup players. So you have you have the uh, but then, funny but dog. Zach, the, but the best part is Zach's the goat of all the dogs. He's, he's like top. He's top he's dog. Alpha dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. He's literally all of them. <laughs> funny, actual, and backup dog. Yeah. There it is. So, yeah. All right. Chiefs Bills. This is a game I'm actually excited about. This is yes. This is the game like everybody's like, oh, you know, like it should have had way more hype around it, and it just doesn't because the Chiefs aren't as entertaining to watch this year. The Bills are struggling this year, whatever whether it's the Madden curse or whatever it may be. But the Chiefs are minus one and a half in Arrowhead. The Bills typically have success in the regular season in Arrowhead, but Chiefs coming off a loss. I, I have to take the Chiefs here. But that's the thing. This this year's Chiefs are not the Chiefs of years past. So you can't be like, oh, Mahomes in primetime. Mahomes with two minutes left. He's an automatic it's, game-winning it, touchdown. You can't have the same stigma. Yeah, I, I understand that. But you're also giving me under three points Mahomes at home coming off a loss. But do you think the Bills kind of know that this is their last chance? And it's like, okay, we need to win this game to make that playoff push. Because they got Dallas next week. So this has to be the starting point. I mean, I mean every game. They're make it, it. It, it seems like every game's a playoff game for the Bills right now, almost. Well, exactly. You don't put any stock in that then? I mean, the Chiefs are 8 and 4. You don't think they coast a little bit? No, no, because I think they can get. They want that one seed. That one seed is such yeah. an advantage in the AFC. And so I think this is a perfect bounce back spot. And maybe, maybe some are asking was the Green Bay Packers, was this Bills game a look ahead for the Chiefs? Some are asking. I don't have an answer to that. That's a good question. I I would. I think the Packers are actually pretty good. I know that's not the game we're talking about, but I don't. I don't. I think the Packers are good. I'm. I'm, I like watching the Packers. I don't want to be retroactive too much, but there was a point in that game where Mahomes gets the ball back with six minutes left, and you're like, "Oh, he's going to do a Mahomes thing." And the Packers defense just didn't let him do a Mahomes thing. But the one thing I will say though, like I feel like there has to be an asterisk on it because if that pass interference gets called on MVS at the end of the game. They probably send it to overtime, and then who do you trust in overtime more than Patrick Mahomes? Uh, maybe Jordan Love. Who knows? Maybe Jordan know. Love. You never we know. Don't know. Yeah, we uh, don't know. You said something about the Chiefs after a loss. So the beautiful thing about having an Ethernet cord is that I can actually do stuff on my other monitor while we're recording this. So I have the Chiefs schedule pulled up. Now let's look. Uh, they lose the first game. The next game, they beat the Jaguars by one possession. They lose to the Broncos. The next game, they do they. Take care of the Dolphins by one possession, 21-14. They lose to the Eagles. The next game, they do beat the Raiders by 14. So the 14, I'll give you that. But it's not like they're they're out for revenge onslaughting these teams. But 
and but I'm not say I'm not saying they're coming out and they're going to destroy these teams, but I think they come out and win these games. I'm not saying Chiefs okay. by 20. I got to stop with the double digit talk, Dylan. You know I can't say that anymore. I'm banned. <laughs> I'm, I'm banned from double digit no, talk. No D squared. No double Ds for Carter. Come on. I don't now. know what kind of committee's banning you from that. Wait. I, why can't I have that? Please. Because no double digits. <laughs> no, 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 no double digits. What are you talking about? What What are you talking about? I'm talking about designated double. drivers. Oh, oh yeah, I see. Yeah, now those you're thinking a du- different double D. Double. No, ball. I told you what I was thinking about. <laughs> Daryl Dawkins. I have. Uh, yeah. I do have an angle on this game, so I I have the number as Chiefs two and a half. That's right on on market. I think the Chiefs go up in the first half, touchdown, ten points, take the Bills. I think the Bills come from behind here. I think this is a this is a second half game. We see we've seen the so graphics. Nice double about, result from Dylan. Or if you want to go double result, you go double result. I think yeah, either or works. Uh, but we've seen the stats about the Chiefs in the second half, and they really. Two weeks ago against the Raiders, they kind of dodged that, but it was the Raiders, uh, de- especially their defense is not great. I think the Bills might go down a little bit earlier. I have a graph, a, two, a couple graphs that I've tweeted out where it shows that the Chiefs perform very well in the first half, not so well in the second half, and it's vice versa for the Bills. The Bills on offense perform worse in the first half, and then they turn it up in the second half. So if if you don't like the beginning number and you like the Bills, I would wait till the game start. Wait till halftime of the game. I think they'll be down, and then that's a great opportunity to take the Bills. I agree with that, too, because you talked about coming off the losses. Do you remember the Dolphins game? The Chiefs come out red hot first half. They go up. I think they went up 21 nothing at halftime in Germany. Yeah, it might have been. And yeah. then, yeah. you know, they just took their foot off the gas. I agree with that. I think that's a good take. The issue is I just think the Chiefs win this game no matter what. So I'm taking the Chiefs in this one. Connor, do you have a side on this? So you're saying you don't believe in all the Bills hype that they're going to make a run at the playoffs or even the division? No, even though, even though, like I, I could see it happening, but they got to win at Arrowhead. They got to play the, da- they got to play the Cowboys. Who Don't they have someone, they have the Dolphins too. Eh. Well, all I, hear from this, all I hear from this podcast is that, that the Dolphins are frauds because they don't beat teams over 500. So I mean, yeah, do we but, think the Dolphins but, are good. No, I still don't believe they're that good because they still don't beat teams. Above, they still lost to the bills. So then it should be no problem. It should be no problem for the Bills that last week. Dolphins shouldn't be a problem. But what if the Dolphins already have their wins over the below 500 teams? Like the Titans. Yeah, well, that's that's for another discussion. But I don't I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm trusting in the Bills here. I, they have really good stats, and their, their results have not backed that up yet. And I think maybe this, these last five games of the year, they start to start to show up a little bit more. They would be right. an unlucky team. They, conversely to the Eagles being lucky, the Bills are an unlucky team. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think, And I think with the Chiefs this year, people have been really slow to accept, like, they're not as good as they were. I mean, Mahomes is still awesome. Doesn't have the guys around him. Kelsey's a step slower this year. You know, you cannot deny that, at least right now during the regular season. I can't put the same stock in this Kansas City team as I have in the years past. I like Buffalo here, too. And I like I love Dylan's strategy of, Live bet him at halftime or even take the double result. Maybe a little Chiefs first half money line, Bills to win the game. I mean, I think that's a good bet. But I know I, I know I'm gonna get that text from you on Sunday. Especially when the Chiefs go up, like say it's in the first half, and you'll probably try and reverse jinx it, whatever. You're gonna text in the first half after Mahomes goes up fourteen nothing or whatever, and you're gonna say why on earth would I ever bet against Mahomes? Like, why would I ever do this? And then an hour and a half later, when the Bills come back and win the game, <laughs> I'm gonna say I never a doubt. I'm so yeah, smart. Never, yeah. I'm such I'm yeah. such a good handicapper. <laughs> Even though Dylan made the pick and we just copied Dylan. That happens more often than you think. I trust Dylan. <laughs> I love it. Some uh, pro Dylan rhetoric finally. Oh, uh, there you go. Before we go on to the last game we want to talk about, uh why are the Panthers down to four and a half? What? Against the Saints. How about because the, how about because the Saints are bad? Are they? To, to be that simple. I mean the Panthers are horrible, but the Saints are not that much better. I don't know. I don't know if the Saints are that bad. I mean, yeah. the record shows that, but their defense isn't that bad. Let's see. PFF has their defensive rated eighth. That's yeah, I mean, that was a good eighth? defense. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't understand why people are taking the Panthers. Carter, I, Carter no. how depressing is it when you click on this game 
And it's like, oh, Carolina and New Orleans, and then the records are right under it. And Carolina That's the worst one. part. <laughs> one I, had, I, had, we, I had like five Lots people over to watch football. We were watching Panther football, and you just look at you just look at the one and one in ten. You're like, wow, that is so depressing. It really puts like, it in perspective. Like the one in nine was all right. The one in ten, you're like, whew. Yeah, once like, it gets to double digits, it's a whole new ball game because you're just depressed. Like you're hopeless. Like what are we even mm-hmm. doing? Don't even have our pick. Hey, at least you guys get that draft pick. Ha 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 ha. What? Ha 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 ha. Oh, my, the trade. My, my, my goal is investment. My, my my dream is that we just give up a third pick. Just just somehow find a way to win two or three games and give up a third pick. I'm fine right. giving up the third pick. Just don't give up Drake Mayer. You know what? Maybe, maybe I just buy into Dylan and say Caleb Williams is overhyped, and I just think he's just the worst. There's a clip out there. There's a clip out there. I'm just saying of a certain someone saying that Caleb Williams will not be a Heisman finalist this year because he's not on a good enough team. I just want to get, put that out there from the Pac-12 preview. We might, show. We might need to dig in the archives. Might need yeah, to find that clip. Someone might need to find that clip. We might have to get our intern on that. Justine, Eagles. get on it. Yeah, <laughs> Eagles, Cowboys, e- Cowboys minus three and a half in Dallas. Once again, we're in this same predicament. You talked about it. You previewed it a couple times already, Dylan, when we've been on shows the last two episodes, actually, that you love Dallas here. It's a little it's a little interesting that Dallas is favored. Once again, you see the line. You're like, wait, Dallas is favored over Philly. And I think that Joe Schmo is like Eagles 10 and two. They're better than the the Cowboys. Jalen Hurts and da- against Dak. Like I'm giving the Eagles with the points all day. They the won't, Cowboys. They won't lose coming off a loss. They won't lose two in yeah. a row. Yeah. yeah. I love the Cowboys this week. I love the Cowboys this week. What do you like, Dylan? So I need to bring something to you guys. I need approval for something. I I want to nominate this for five star. And if you're a listener, we have SMU five star. Cha Ching. We have 49ers five star. Cha Ching. Um. Last week, I came on this show, and I said it, it was two and a half. I said, mm-hmm. that is a five-star. Can Dallas two and a half count as a five-star? I got it at two and a half. Because so I, I said put- it on the show, and I clipped it, and I put it on my Twitter. Yeah, and you have, and you have, well, you, well, you'd said it on two episodes, too, is the thing. And so, you, you, you got it on the look-ahead line. So if people are listening, that line was available before last week's games. So also, it, it looks it it's looking like it's going to go back down to three, anyways. Okay, three's not bad. I I already said it on this show last week or whatever. I said it on my live stream. Like Dal, it's all Dallas here, and I want to give. I I don't want people to think I'm rescinding the Eagles talk here because I do think that they are they are overvalued by people that don't power rate these teams. Uh, just because of their record, they find ways to win games late, which is great. In a system like the NFL, it's what you have to do. You just have to win games. But from a betting perspective, it's uh, it's a little bit more than that. So uh, I give the Eagles the benefit of the doubt a little bit because they are coming off of a very tough stretch. They are coming off, I understand, not this week, but they had that overtime game with the Bills. There's a lot of things that go into this where the Eagles are at a disadvantage. Um. But we're we're still looking that the Cowboys coming off of a long week. They played Thursday night with uh, against the Seahawks. We knew beforehand the injury situation with Dallas and Philadelphia. Not so much. We had to wait till Sunday. I love Dallas here. They're going to be more well. Re- they're going to be yeah more more rested, not more well rested. They'll be more rested well, than Philadelphia, and uh, I I like them to get it done. I you think back to the game, the last time they played and it can really be reduced to a couple of stupid mistakes by the Cowboys that I don't think are going to be replicated on a weekly basis. So I love Dallas here. I think they win. If you can get three, I, you know what? I'll issue five star at three, uh, five star at three. And that's, you can that's have where the two and a half. You can have the two and a half. I think it's fair. You mentioned it multiple times before this. I, I mean, I love them here. I think, I think they'll handle their business and I if Dallas wins. That's a tie for the NFC East, right? I think so. Yes. Because yes. So, yeah, yeah, it will be. Well, Eagles Tom, and I, right. this, yeah. oh. I think so. Yeah. Um, I'm staying on the Cowboys train. You know, historically, I'm not I don't love the Cowboys, don't love their fans. But I think <laughs> this year, more than any other year, this is the year to do it for them. And we talked about Dak MVP last week. All of a sudden, guess what? He's co favorite to win MVP yeah. this week after last week's game and Jalen Hurst debacle and all that. I think you're right. The rest plays a part in it. 
the Eagles are banged up. Goddard's banged up. Hurts is a little bit banged up. There was even some Joe Schmo on NFL Network talking about start Mariota. No. I don't think we're going to go that far. But Hurts is a little banged up. And I think you're right, Carter. The last game these two teams met, there wasn't that much of a difference. And I think the pendulum's going to swing a little bit more in Dallas's favor this week. I like Dak and the Cowboys to get it done in Jerry World. I really do. And all of a sudden, it's going to be a tie for the division. And then it's anybody's ballgame. Even though the Cowboys have the gauntlet of a schedule. But I think they get it done this week. I love them. Is it a little worrying that it, it kind of feels like too many people are on the Cowboys? I don't know if anybody is on them. I, I was going to say, is, is there that many people on are, the Cowboys? I don't know. But it, maybe I'm just here on this podcast hearing us three talk about it. And that feels like my entire existence thinking about it. Because... <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the Cowboys because, and I've seen like a couple people on Twitter be like, yep, taking the Cowboys this week. But I, I really, I really think every Joe Schmo is going to take the Eagles plus three. Well, that's how I it felt every- like last week in San, with San Francisco. It was like, oh, everybody's on San Francisco. So something's going to happen to where this doesn't hit. And there was never a doubt. So that like last week's result makes me feel better about betting the Cowboys this week because the Eagles aren't, you know, they didn't pull magically pull one out of their, their hats last game. So I don't know. I mean, I see your point. I have a question here, and this is, uh, I'll be honest, this is something Mark and Philly said. I want to I bring this up. Um, at what point, what needs to happen if, what needs to happen for us to be right about the Eagles? What, what do you think the actual result is? Because, uh, wild card. Really? Not, not win the division? They, they need to not win the division in order for us to so be right? For us to be right about the Eagles being lucky? Yeah, look, play, uh, benefiting from like other teams' woes. Like you see, they get blown up by the 49ers, but that that wasn't enough because you're looking at one game versus four or five where they where they got these wins. What like do, I mean, if Dallas covers or convincingly beats Philadelphia, is that it? Is it that the the Cowboys have to win the division? What, what do you I, think has to happen? So I think the media narrative, and I think you know, I think the overall football collective is going to say. If the Cowboys come out and beat the Eagles by double digits, then everyone's going to be like, wow, Eagles fraud watch. Like, yeah. okay, maybe they were getting lucky in these games. You know, we need to keep an eye out on that. But I also would I would walk that back a little bit because, I mean, two-game sample size against insanely good teams. Like, they have beaten good teams this year, unlike the Dolphins, which I still need to see. But the, the Eagles have beaten those good teams. They've beaten the Bills. They've beaten the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Like, they've done that. So I would walk back that. But – if they don't win this division after being 10 and one, that's when I'm concerned. If you end up in that four or five wild card game, having to go to Atlanta, that's concerning. I think that would mean we were right about that because we never said this wasn't a playoff team. This, oh, but, right. but we did say, you know, Hey, a little lucky. It's a well, little I lucky. I don't even think just going at the bare bones of this argument. I don't even think it's like one side's right. One side's wrong. It's just a statement we've been making an opinion. We've been holding I don't think there's any way to prove it right or wrong. You have the numbers to back it up. We've seen the results. But if you look at the Eagles schedule after Dallas, guess what? Yeah. It's Seattle, New York Giants twice, and the Cardinals. So they're not going to lose one of those games, barring something catastrophic. So I don't even think during the regular season there's going to be an answer, even if they lose the division, which I don't think they will, because the Cowboys have a gauntlet of a schedule coming up after Philadelphia. But how yeah, can but we if- be proven right? Like, how can we be proven right? I don't think there's a clear-cut, set-in-stone answer. Maybe they lose the first round of the playoffs. Maybe that's what that's I was going to say. That has to be it. But other than that, I don't. even if they lose the division, I don't see it. I, I want to go ahead and throw this out there uh, because a lot of times I think things and I don't say them and they happen and I end up kicking myself in the butt. Uh I think it is very possible that the Eagles drop one of these games to the Giants, and I'm specifically eyeing Week 18. Yeah, as long as the I, game's I not for like that. the division, like it, it, unless but, they're playing for the division. Caveat: What if what if the Giants are in that top two draft pick sweepstakes? Devito is playing for a starting spot. He's he doesn't care. I don't think he can have one of those. I think that ship has sailed. I don't know. I mean, the last couple of weeks. Hasn't looked yeah, too bad. Because I still think they'll be playing for division or seeding in that game. Plus, yeah, I don't think it's going to be meaningless. If they're, in, the, if they're, they're in that if that draft thing, maybe the Giants make a quick call and be like, hey, Terod Taylor, you're in with a punctured mm. lung or whatever he has. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, does anybody have more weird injuries than Tyrod Terod Taylor? You're talking about bad luck. 
Where's he in the luck rankings? Because those are some bizarre injuries. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. the doctor puncturing his lung. I mean, I just, oof. Yeah. Doctor. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I th- we're all in the Cowboys. We're aligned on a lot of these games, I guess, except for Bill's Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, we've been aligned on a lot of games, and we've been right together. It's okay. We can have a little kumbaya We here haven't there, been but... aligned on a lot of parlays, but that's okay. Ooh. The, well, we've hit two of them. We've hit two of them. Yeah. We have hit two. Okay. We've had we've hit two of them, and guess what? That great transition. We're about Thank to hit you. three. I'm, we're I, about to hit three. Time, that's not my first time on here, Carter. Come on. Dylan, give the people the pick. <sighs> Jaguars, Browns, first half. Under 18 and a half. That's a little gross. It's a little gross. It's a lot gross. That's one of the ones you really have to just plug your nose. Yep. Get your get your work boots on. Step into the weeds. Yep. Just it's like, dig deep. Like Fear Factor when you have to eat the, the cup full of crickets. Yeah. I'm not gonna uh, do I'm not gonna do it with my hand because it'll look phallic, but you know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Carter, Jags just, Browns first half under 18 and a half Carter, whatever yes. Dylan just did with his nose. You got to take that as a graphic and be like, when you see the Eagles luck rankings and then you put, the, put that. Oh, don't there. worry. Well, I'll try and make it the thumbnail. Oh, that's I'll great. make it. The th- we'll make it the thumbnail. Uh, Connor, give us your pick. Yeah, this one, I guess we're sticking with the fear factor theme this week because I was going to say Texans jets under, but it's already dropped like four points since I got it. So I'm staying away from that. We're going Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Atlanta Falcons over 39. We're taking an NFC South over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I said it. Oh, oh, that's so gross. We are getting down and dirty. Baker Mayfield, Desmond Ritter, we need some points, and I think they can Ugh. do it for us. Oh, oh, that is so nasty. I almost want to put Browns plus three or Bears <laughs> plus three in there just to make it gross, even though I don't like that play. Don't do uh, it, please. Let's go Chargers minus two and a half against the Broncos. I love that. I love that. Okay. I don't like the All Chargers. Right. You know that, but I love that play. You uh, don't like the Broncos even more. It, it's fade Broncos season. It is fade the Broncos season. They peaked. I think they peaked. All right. That's the NFL parlay this week. Jags, Browns, first half under 18 and a half. Bucks, Falcons over 39. Chargers minus two and a half. Sneaky, sneaky, our sharpest parlay of the year. This is kind of sharp. <laughs> that is, that is, yeah, some are saying like I mean, these aren't Dr. Schultz sharp. We yeah. got in the weeds and like looked at these some of these games. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, you know, we went to surgery on these. We we got a little surgical on them. Shannon. All right. Um there's nothing else really in the NFL, I don't think. So, should we move on to our final segment? Let's yeah, why it. the playoff left Florida State out and got No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so you want to talk about Harvard talking about the Jews, right? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. Stay quiet. We're gonna do our know. we're gonna do our own. So if you've seen I don't know what show is it. Is it Jimmy Kimmel? Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon? Right? I think it's Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy One Fallon, Jimmy from shows, South Park, whatever. all the same thing. Yeah. Anyhow. <laughs> celebrity mean <laughs> tweets. They have the celebrity mean tweets. So I thought, you know, Connor brought this up before the show. I think we should do our own. So it can't be celebrity mean tweets because obviously we aren't celebrities. So it should be, small, you know, <laughs> mom's basement mean tweets. Mm, that's a good one. one. That's small a good one. T- you know, small time podcast mean tweets. We can figure it out. Connor, you want to start us off with some of our Instagram comments? So we're, we're going to refer from mostly, I'll, we'll, we'll transition to some other videos maybe if we have enough good ones. Uh, yeah, yeah. First video we'll do is the one where I said last week where I already apologized. I already said I was wrong. I already said, hey, bad pick by me we deal that's that happens guess what no one's going to talk about boise state no one's going to talk about smu for dylan no one's going to talk about our winners you know what you know what they say as stephen che once famously said if you don't have haters you don't have fans Mm. that's what they say that's what some people are saying anyhow the video we're referencing is when i said georgia would win by double digits against bam in the sec title game uh a gazillion comments on there right now so Connor, lead us off with some of the yeah. some of the mean comments. So let me preface this by saying, if you guys have any free time and you're bored, go look at our comments that have blown up on some of these. Pretty, big, it, it's these pretty big, yeah. And and read it in your in your best southern voice. Well, I would so, say look at their profile picture and then decipher how you want to no. <laughs> read it. And, and, and when you see the word football, don't say football, say football. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first Whenever one here. Let's start it off. Uh, this is a little Georgia video, like he said. We're going to start light here because there's so many that are like, anyone can buy a mic. This didn't age well. This aged like sour milk, blah, blah. No, these are the best of the best. And I quote, 
you aren't really smart, are you? No chance Georgia blows out Alabama. Jalen Milrow has played damn good this year. Georgia had a very difficult time at Auburn, too. Ignorance is bliss. So that was one of the few that came before the game, shockingly enough. Any reactions to that one? Ignorance is bliss, guys? Eh. Okay. These we can people. do better. We can we do, do better. better. Okay. Carter, you have one? Or you want me to go again? Uh, Let's see here. I got one. I got one. I, I, I was going to do the rubbing alcohol one. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, I, I don't need, whatever this guy on Instagram or Facebook, whatever it may be. I think you may be drinking, you may have been drinking rubbing alcohol during this video. Pretty sure Bama won and are now in the playoff. Miracle Mill Road did it again. And about the Iron Bowl, it goes down to the wire 95% of the time, regardless of record when playing in Auburn. Don't believe me? Go look up the 10 games played there. I don't think I was drinking rubbing alcohol. I don't think so either. I think, you're, I think you were given a, a well-educated opinion, Carter. I think, I think, I, was pro- I, think I was probably drinking an overpriced uh, swig. Overpriced oh, swig. Shout oh out swig. don't even bring it. Don't even talk about <laughs> swig right now. One of Connor, the ones, one of the ones I've seen a lot is tell me you don't actually watch the games without telling me you don't actually watch the games. And that's just one I want to address because do you really think we come on here and say all this stuff about teams and bring up numbers and all that to not watch the games. You think we're just on here just talking about something we don't even watch? Like, do you really, in your heart of hearts, when you're typing that out, think that's true? If you want to get to complaining about the the comments that are made, like the the most common comments, the not watching games is one of the most. Like, ask my wife. I'm sure she would be thrilled if I didn't just sit down on a couch all day Sunday and watch football. I promise you I'm watching mm-hmm. all of these games. Now, sometimes there are a few that slip under the radar and because we're we're not machines, we're humans. Right. But I, I can assure you, Saturdays and Sundays from the last week of August until the second week of February, I'm watching football games. Carter, oh, I, I hate it. One. I hate it. You can, you can keep going. All right, here's one. This was a terrible take. Why take Georgia over a Bama team that has gotten consistently better each week? The Iron Bowl is the biggest rivalry in college football. That game is known for being close, just like when Cam Newton had to come back against Bama from down 21. Just remember, the people who doubt Alabama are the ones that slowly start to lose credit. I would stay away from those picks moving forward. LOL. (laughs) Doubting Bama. Is, Is this true, guys? Do people lose credit for doubting Bama? Because you know what? After the playoff selection this weekend, I don't think that's far off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I mean, look, I was wrong, but these comments are just hilarious. Uh, someone said a little late, you experts. We posted it before. <laughs> yeah, that's we always one. The, we, po- <laughs> okay. we posted it on – this post was on Friday, so I'll give you – one of them, LMAO, wow, I just love when men are so wrong. Sexist. Oh, there we go. Roll oh. tide roll. This clip made my day. I'm glad I made your day. I'm Thank glad I made nice. your day by See, looking like an idiot. That's the best. When they try to be sarcastic, that, take it literally. Oh, you know what? Thank you. I'm glad that you took your time to make that comment. I, that's yeah. the best. There's a lot of them like, shut shut the hell up and go play yeah. Fortnite. Those are great. I think those are fair, funny that, comments. I hear those comments. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. Fine. I'll go play Fortnite. <laughs> I'm I'm right. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, th- those, those, are, those are fantastic. Can, I got can one I, direct. Oh, go, you go ahead, Connor. Go ahead. Okay, well, direct it at Carter here. All that tart, all that talk from a dork who probably never played football in his life. Mm. If so, he only got a participation trophy at best. Yeah, no, not a football guy. Play basketball. Yeah, might be yeah. accurate. How did yeah. that turn out for you? Shows how much you know about football. Talk about something else on your podcast. Tune into the live show. He did. No, I said tune into the live show. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> same. He said talk about uh, something else on your podcast. We do. Oh, we do. yeah. Tune into the live show. Yeah. Uh, um, so. Go Do ahead, you have Dylan. one from this this TikTok, Carter? Because I have ones from another TikTok. Go ahead. No, I, I was gonna go. I was gonna go in the Taylor Swift realm. I've got one more from this one. If you want me to do it before we move on, okay. I was gonna save my, the last one. The one, oh. you know. Okay. All right. We'll save it till the end. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Dylan. So this TikTok, we we were discussing the best team in college football. It was posted oh. November thirteenth. So this was. I think this was before. Before we played Penn State, maybe? I can't remember the exact date. Mich- we being Michigan, before Michigan played Penn State. Uh, it definitely was the week before Georgia played Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. I, and uh, I think we yeah, said Michigan right. was the best team. We did, because I was like, if Georgia steamrolls Ole Miss, then might might change my answer. Yeah. So, uh, accents. Will that get us canceled? 
Southern what accents. Accent? Southern. Southern, no. you're fine. No, yeah, you're good. Nobody cares about that. Uh, okay, so this one. Um, it, it's got to be good. It's got to be good. <clears throat> it's short but sweet. A bunch of book nerds talking about Georgia as the number one team, undefeated 27 0 and still counting. Go, dogs. Is that Kirby um, Smart? Wrong. <laughs> Go, dogs. <laughs> Was that uh, Kirby Smart? <laughs> it might have been. It might just a Kirby Smart burner. There was um, one. Um, can I can I read some Taylor Swift ones? Because I I I had never. So I don't have the, I don't have the notifications on for these. So I don't get to see these comments hardly ever, unless Connor you send them to me or someone yeah. sends me the comments. So the I Taylor never Swift ones, seen these. dude. Before you do this, the Taylor Swift there, ones are another level because when it gets to Taylor Swift side of TikTok, there's people so, there coming at us for every little thing. So. Uh, yeah, I think these are just hilarious. But anyhow, it was the one talking about, well, you know, Zach Wilson's going to ball out and steal Taylor Swift. Oh, oh yeah. Obviously a joke. Um, there, I'm not a Swifty, but no one is leaving Hottie Travis for that kid. <laughs> Hottie Travis. <laughs> Hottie Travis? Let's see here. What? Some of these. Are, she's pretty mid, though. Kelsey could do better. Well, that's mm, racing. Healthy that's debate. Tough. Healthy debate. That's one, that got, that's one of the ones that got. That's one of the ones got like thirty replies, and then it was like arguments inside of arguments inside the comment section. That was a good one. Embrace debate. Is Taylor Swift mid? Could Kelsey do better? She's person of the year, Carter. Come on now. Some are asking. Uh, yeah, those are those are insane. We'll we'll wrap up here. We're running out of time. I've got I've the Mac hit- Daddy. Are you gonna do it? I'll I'll do the Mac Daddy. I since I'm the one who got roasted on this, so I think I think I get to have this one. Let okay. me get this pulled up. I I, I this is the this, wait, wait, I wait. think this might before the Mac Daddy. There's one right below it. Um, wait, you doing ahead. the long one or the? You know which one I'm doing, Ed Johnston. Oh, okay. All right, you do that one. Probably my favorite Instagram cr- comment we've ever gotten from some. I mean, this is this is hilarious because. I'm going to read this. I'll, I'll try and read it in a Southern accent. And uh, you just know exactly where it came from. If, if you, I mean, if you look at his you profile picture, comment, <laughs> you know what? You don't have to look at the profile picture. Just read the words. <laughs> Who the hell are these guys? Three guys. Anyways, they, none of them look like they ever picked up a football, baseball, golf, club, tennis, racket, Nothing in their lifetime it took these. Howdy doody sitting there talking about Premier Dynasty in Bama. God take care, howdy doody, butts back to your mama's basement. That's an all timer. I mean, I, I had a stroke reading that. Well, the grammar was off. If we heard this person talk in real life, it would be exactly like that. Oh, yeah. But I love that. I love that. Well, that's that's a com- Hey, give me that. You can give me those comments all day. It I am fine us. with that. We want to oh, post yeah. more clips now because we want this. Yeah, we want this engagement. Like the lo- the lame ones are when you're not creative. Like, that's creative. That's yeah. hilarious. But when you're not creative, when you're just like middle finger, like, yeah, you know, yeah. you guys are wrong, idiots. You're like, all right. L like, take. You, you, eh, L take. I think that's fine. L take really? is fine. If, yeah, uh, L take doesn't bother me because sometimes you, you you have an L take and I did. Okay. I guess I get yeah, that. I, got, so, I, got, I, I, take so, I take them on the chin all the time. It's all right. So, Lee, oh, here, Carter, least favorite comment to get. Ooh, Most boring, uh, what like if you whatever. I I think the one about like not watching the games that one just annoys me because we're not gonna have a whole podcast about a sport without watching the games. Yeah, yeah. maybe That's just watching stupid. The game, watching the games once is annoying. Uh, Here, anyone here's one. Can, anyone can have a podcast is getting old. Yeah, like at Here, first yeah. it was funny, but then it's like all right, like dorks with it. a mic. Yeah, here's one that says, "How do you idiots get airtime?" Little do they know, we're not getting airtime. <laughs> we're making airtime. We're making our own airtime. <laughs> Give me a break on that one. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Those those ones are like they're just not creative. Like mom's basement and stuff. Like the, yeah. come on. Like you can do better. You can do oh. better. You can you can follow Ed Johnson's protocol. Talk about howdy duty butts back to your mama's basement. Like he yeah. did use mom's basement, but it was it was at least funny. There's one in here that says, you bunch of goobers have never played a down of football. Bama made y'all look like fools again. Wankers. <laughs> yeah. What a great one. What a great one. Yeah. I mean, just so original. Like you can do better. You can do better, people. You can. You can roast us in the comments way better. Also, comment comment when we hit five stars. How about that for once? Yeah, you know? there's no comment on SMU or wow. San Francisco. So this is, this is a little odd. I just saw this on the, the best football team. Uh, 
someone commented, you need a girl on this two exclamation points. Okay. Oh. And I went to, I went to this person's profile. I didn't know if it was a guy trolling or whatnot. I go to the profile. It is a girl that is posting a bunch of sec content, but I don't know how old she is. <laughs> Good for them. I'm sent, I'm going to send you guys this TikTok. Send it to me. Send this, it to this, me. This, okay, I'm watching it. This is bad. This is bad. I'm sending it to you guys. Send it to me. The, oh, I I can do least favorite comment. Whoever said they wanted to slash my my tires should. Be oh, slashed. that one was awesome. The, no, that one. It wasn't. Well, it was scary. I mean, I, I get I, that. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Not even that part. I don't give a crap about that part. Where you're bringing up. It's the fact where it was too easy of a target to go back against because the first video on his profile was how much he enjoyed being the little spoon. You're like, dude, you can't, you can't, com- you can't comment after people if you're, you can't go after people if you're <laughs> talking about how you like being the little spoon, buddy. Yeah. So, so maybe another discussion topic. We don't have to tackle it today, but burners, burner accounts, anonymous accounts, good thing or a bad thing? Burners. Burners, good thing or bad? Are they good, good or bad? I think when you do them right, they're hilarious. But oh, Dylan, I, I'm watching the TikTok you it's just tough. sent. Me. <laughs> That's tough, man. That's tough. I, I I didn't know, and then I then I watched her watch some talk, and I was like, ah, oh, oh, hey, summer maybe she's right. Hey, huh? ma- hey, maybe we need a girl on the podcast. Maybe we do. Maybe we freshen things up. We we need to have a significant others episode. A- Abby has been. Mm. Abby has asked when she can be yeah. on <laughs> that would we, be quite the quite the episode that, we we could produce hey, and we could we, let can, abby justine and alex uh, is it alexis yeah alexis on and let them do their things i'm not talking to you alexa that's gonna be like when tnt does players only and you're like all right pistons wizards tuesday night i guess this is what it is <laughs> 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 all right, uh, yeah, all right, Quentin uh, Richardson. Let's get you on here. All right, Isaiah Thomas, spit your takes. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to close out with a positive one, and I could not find it. There was one on a YouTube video that was like, me and my buddies were listening from, was it the Philippines or Germany? And they're like, we there's love some y'all Phil- show. There, hey, there's some Philippines people that listen. Hey, shout out my Filipino people. Yeah, well, there was like a nice comment on one of our YouTube that was like shouting us out from another country, and that's positive. So I just wanted to end on that note. You know, instead of all this mom's basement garbage. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's there's a ton of great comments too. There, there, there's not. I don't. We don't give enough love to the good comments too. That's, that's oh, I found it. Thing. I found it. I found it. Love the show. Watching from Melbourne, Australia. Keep it up, guys. Thank you. No Thank way. You. That's awesome. Thank you. Shout out. It's Shout the people. There's again tangent time. I I hate to do this, but there's one guy when that Texans video went viral. There's one guy. It's a burner account. His name is Roger Goodell. <laughs> and no, he, is it he's a burner? Great. He's no, he's awesome. He likes everything I post. He watches all the shows. He he watches this show when it's streamed on Twitter. He watches my live streams. He comments on like he. No, he's he, great. I yeah, I, I see his Twitter Twitter interactions all the time. Shout out Roger. I, I I'm sure you're watching it. It's that makes the whole Texans thing worth it. Is just having one guy <laughs> like that that will interact the way he interacts. It's awesome. Shout out fellow Carolina Panthers. Englishman Luke Gray, shout out. Yes, Luke. Yeah, Luke, yeah, we're Luke. cricket guys. We're tight on cricket. Yeah, poor Watford, man. Poor Watford. Huh. His, I mean, could you imagine? I mean, if you guys don't know Watford, yeah, not great, not great, not great. We're pulling for Watford, though. We're pulling for Watford. I, but I also a Hornets to, and Panthers fan. Yeah, yeah. I look uh, forward like, to his tweets about the Panthers on Sunday because he always calls no, them by like their jersey numbers, and he's like, yes. "Get fifteen off the field," and I love it. It is hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, if if you uh, right, go ahead, cut twenty six. <laughs> yeah, if you lo- if you love the Panthers or, or just generally like good football tweets, follow Luke on Twitter. He's a fantastic follow, fantastic I follow. I agree. Anyhow, that's it from us. We'll be back. We'll be back Sunday night. NFL recap. Connor, we're doing a basketball pod next week. Yes, so we are. Also, Following I the tournament s- finals. So we're gonna do an NBA pod, and then I have a sneaky little college basketball thing coming next week. Stay tuned for that. We'll be ready. Hey. Anyhow, that's it from us. Follow us at CarterCast on everything, at CarterCast on YouTube. Subscribe, 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 at Wilkerson A. Dillon, at Connor underscore Sparrow, at Carter B. A. You guys know the drill. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Nice. Nice. That was a good episode. That was good. I, I enjoyed that. Yeah.